Hello and welcome everyone. The topic that I will cover in today's lecture is urine analysis and it is very important for the viva voice because uh, exercise comes in the exam <coughs> regarding the urine analysis. The urine it is uh, formed in the kidneys and it is the ultra filtrate of blood and uh, it ca carries the metabolic waste of the body. Now 95% of it is composed of water and 5% they are solutes and the important ones are urea, then chlorides, sulfates, phosphates, all these are the constituents which are uh, found in the urine. Uh, urine examination, it involves the collection and preservation of the urine. Then it is followed by the urine examination, which falls in major three categories. First is physical examination, second is chemical examination, and third is the microscopic examination. Now before going to the, micro, uh, the physical examination, we should know what are the various indication for which the urine analysis is done. So first of all, for any suspected kidney disease like glomulonephritis, glomulopathy, the nephrotic syndrome, nephritic syndrome, pyelonephritis, kidney failure, all these uh, kidney diseases, uh, we do the urine analysis routinely. Then for the direction of urinary tract infections, uh, urine analysis is done. Then for the detection and management of uh, metabolic disorders like uh, most importantly diabetes, then for the differential diagnosis of jaundice and for the detection and management of plasma cell dyscrasias like multiple myeloma, we know that Benz-Jones proteins they come in the urine. Then uh, very commonly uh, the morning sample is used for diagnosis of pregnancy and the test is known as urine pregnancy test. So these are the various indications for which uh, we can do the urine analysis. So next, <clears throat> what are the uh, methods of uh, collection of urine? So this is an important uh, viva question and uh, it is very commonly asked. So uh, first sample uh, uh, is the early morning sample and uh, early morning sample it is the most uh, concentrated one and it has uh, the stable cellular elements as well as the cast and also the uh, epithelial cells. So for these uh, indications we can take the early morning sample which is the highly concentrated one. Second is the random uh, sample or the routine sample for which no special preparation is done. So it can be collected uh, anytime, anywhere uh, in the universal container. So no patient preparation is needed. And then there is the mid, um, uh, midstream clean catch sample. So for the midstream clean catch sample, uh, it is uh, commonly used for the bacterial culture or fun fungal cultures and it is again taken in the sterile contain container. So for UTI, unit tract infection, we can use it. And in this uh, clean cast sample, it has to be clean. So uh, uh, we always uh, ask the patient to clean their genital area before collecting this urine. And also it is midstream. So the initial stream, initial part of the sample that will be discarded and the mid part of the sample, it is collected. So that's why it is called midstream and clean catch sample, mostly used for the bacterial culture. Now the other methods are, one is the uh, catheter sample. So catheter sample, again, it can be used for the uh, cultures, bacteria cultures. And here we insert the catheter directly into the bladder and uh, we can take the <coughs> sample. So also if there is uh, in the urethra, there is some lesion like stricture or trauma or there is a problem of urinary retention, again uh, we can take the suprapubic aspiration. So suprapubic aspiration, the sample is directly taken from the urinary bladder and also in the infants, the suprapubic aspiration sample can be taken. So uh, next is the uh, pediatric collection bag. So for the, uh, the pediatric age group patients, we are they cannot, uh, they are not able to voluntarily void the urine. Now we can use the pediatric collection bags. And lastly is the 24-hour urinary sample. So 24-hour urinary sample, it is very commonly uh, asked in the viva. Why it is taken? Why do we need to take the 24-hour urine sample for which test? So first is most important for the quantitative estimation of protein. So we can take 24-hour protein. If we have to detect, we will take the 24-hour urine sample. 
second for the estimation of amino acids like penicillin uh, mendelic acid metanephrins in case of disease like pheochromocytoma then for detection of acid fast bacilli in urine for detection of microalbuminuria which is done commonly for diabetes mellitus then for measuring the specific gravity of the sample for all these cases the 24 hour urine sample uh, is indicated uh, now uh, there is a universal container again this is asked that uh, what is a universal container so it, it is a sterile and wide mouth container and outer side of the container it should be having the label so label should carry the name and identification of the patient and the date and time of taking the specimen so for different capacities are available in the market and commonly the volume is between 40 to 60 ml now next uh, in the 24 hour sample uh, thus uh, this is a container which can be used for the 24 hour sample comes in different capacities like 3 to 4 liters and uh, the question which is asked in the viva is that how you take the 24 hour sample so uh, the patient is asked to discard the morning sample at 8 am so the first sample the the urine which is voided at 8 am it is discarded then after that uh, he or she will take all the subsequent samples till the next day 8 am sample so this is how we take the 24 hour sample and the written instructions should be given to the patient for this and uh, uh, in between voiding the samples the sample should be refrigerated for proper preservation now next question is uh, how do we preserve the urine sample so uh, normally the sample which is uh, uh, given to the laboratory should be examined within two hours because as the time passes uh, what happens the uh, um, the urea in the urine it is converted to ammonia so uh, that will cause the increase in the ph of the urine then the uh, chemical components like glucose uh, bilirubin ketones all these they decrease decrease with time uh, and also the color will darken then the clarity of the sample will decrease and the, od and the odor will become more offensive so if we keep the urine sample then it will uh, get all these changes so generally if we are not uh, examining the sample within two hours it should be refrigerated between four to six degrees celsius again this is a viva question and uh, also we can use certain chemical preservatives for the same for preserving the urine so uh, what are the various uh, preservatives that can be used again this is a question so first is tolvin so tolvin this concentration it can be used and but the problem is that it floats on the surface of the urine then second is formalin it can be used but it gives a false positive when it is test for the reducing sugar then uh, thymol can be used but it interferes with the heat coagulation test we do for the protein and also for the bile salts then preservative tablets come they contain formaldehyde chloroform can be used one drop per 30 ml of urine and lastly concentrated hcl uh, hydrochloric acid can also be used and uh, but it is uh, it hampers with the cytology so uh, these are all uh, the preservatives that are used and you should remember the names of these now when we talk about the physical exam examination it is done in the following headings volume color appearance odor then uh, ph and specific gravity so we start with the uh, volume the important question that are asked what is the normal uh, urinary volume in 24 hours that is 600 to 2000 ml when we call it polyuria we call it polyuria when the volume of uh, 24 hour urine is uh, more than 2000 ml we call it polyuria when the 24 hour urine is less than 400 ml and n urea when there is uh, less than 100 ml urine voided in 24 hours and another question that is asked is but what is nocturia so nocturia is excretion of urine uh, more than 500 ml uh, with a specific gravity of less than 1.018 at the night time so it is commonly seen in chronic glomerular nephritis so these are the questions that are asked in the urinary volume the next question is uh, what will be the causes of increased urine output that is polyuria so one is diabetes mellitus diabetes insipidus then if we take uh, increased fluids then also uh, urine volume will increase then diuretics will cause polyuria and intravenous saline or glucose 
Next, what are the important causes for oliguria? One is if the uh, water intake is decreased, leading to dehydration. Other causes of dehydration can be vomiting, diarrhea, excessive sweating. They can cause oliguria. Then renal ischemia, uh, acute tubular necrosis, and if there is obstruction to the urinary, urinary tract. So these are the important causes of oliguria. Anuria is mostly due to shock, uh, and in the final stage of chronic renal failure. So here urine output will drastically decrease to less than 100 ml per 24 hour. Next we come to the color. Normal color of the urine is clear and pale yellow. We also call it straw colored and it is due to the presence of urochromes. So they give color to the, uh, mostly they give color to the uh, urine and also addition, in addition to the urochromes, urobilins, urethrins, they also give the urine coloration but you should remember this urochromes. Then uh, colorless urine is seen when urine is uh, very much diluted. Uh, can be due to increased water intake also in case of diabetes mellitus, diabetes insipidus and diuretics. Then second, if the urine is deep yellow, it can be due to dehydration. Here the urine is concentrated. Then if the urine is milky in appearance, it can be due to uh, purulent genitourinary tract infections and next important cause is chyluria. So where the, uh, the chyle is present in the lymphatics and when it comes in the urine, it is uh, cause chyluria. Then um, we do the ether test for uh, chyluria. And it can be orange, urine color can be orange in case of fever or drugs like rifampicin. Lastly, very commonly asked in the viva, when is the urine red or smoky colored? So can be because of uh, beetroot ingestion, can be because of hematuria. And we also remember that in uh, nephritic syndrome, we say that the urine becomes cola colored. So that is also because of the presence of RBCs or hematuria. Next is the appearance of the urine. So appearance, uh, normally the urine is clear in appearance. So uh, it can be cloudy or hazy. Hazy is also slightly cloudy. Uh, because of the presence of mucus, epithelial cells, amorphous debris of phosphates and urates. So it can be uh, hazy or cloudy. Then it can be turbid because of the presence of pus and bacterial infection. So sometimes they ask what, how uh, do you define that the urine is clear or it is uh, slightly cloudy, hazy or cloudy. So uh, we say that a urine is clear when we can uh, read a newsprint through the urine and no solutes or visible part, no particles are visible. That is clear. Newsprint is easily uh, read. Then it is uh, when it is slightly cloudy or hazy that particles they are visible but still we can read the newsprint through the uh, urine. This is called uh, hazy or slightly cloudy. Now uh, when it is called cloudy, when there is uh, we can see the uh, solutes, the particulate uh, matter and the newsprint becomes blurred. So newsprint is blurred and it is difficult to, to read when we uh, see through the tube. And it is turbid when the newsprint cannot be seen at all. So this is, these are the different definitions. Now how do we uh, define the different appearances of the uh, urine in terms of clarity? Now next is the again a viva question. Uh, what is a foamy urine? Normally if we agitate the urine sample then foam is formed but it uh, dissipates upon standing. So uh, when the urine uh, contains albumin, there is albumin urea. If we shake the urine sample, it will form a white foam which is very much stable on keeping. And if the yellow foam is formed, it is mostly due to bilirubin in urine. So you should remember the causes of foamy urine. Then next is the urinary pH or reaction. So uh, the urine maintains the normal hydrogen ion concentration in plasma and extracellular fluid. Normal pH of urine, you should remember it is 4.628 and it tested by litmus paper, pH paper or dipsticks. When the urine is acidic, it can be due to diabetic ketoacidosis, the ketosis due to starvation or fever, then in case of systemic acidosis and UTI especially by E. coli. Causes of alkaline urine are systemic alkalosis, alkalization therapy 
and severe vomiting or UTI caused by proteus species. Next uh, important point is odor. So normal odor of the urine is faint aromatic and again in the viva these things can be asked when they, the odor is ammonical it is because of the bacteria when there is the bacterial infection the urea is converted to ammonia by the bacteria so ammonical odor then fruity odor it is seen in case of ketone urea then maple syrup or uh, odor like a burnt sugar it is seen in maple syrup urine disease and mousy odor it is seen in case of phenyl ketone urea so again these are the important questions in odor Next is the specific gravity. Now specific gravity depends on the concentration of various solutes. If the solutes are more, then the specific gravity is more. So and also uh, measures the concentrating ability of the urine. So specific gravity, it is uh, very commonly these questions are asked in the viva. Uh, it is measured by the urinometer. Urinometer is also kept in the instrument table. And the other method is the refractometer and dipstick method. So urinometer, it is uh, in the urinometer is used to measure the specific gravity, and urinometer we fill two third of the urinometer with urine, and you should remember this value that minimum 15 ml of urine is required for measuring the specific gravity, and urinometer uh, floats in the urine, but the sides of the urinometer should not be touched. Again, this is an important precaution asked as a viva question. Uh, when we measure the specific gravity for urine, then uh, we have to measure the lowest level of the meniscus. Again, this is asked in the viva because if you remember, then in uh, Sally's hemoglobinometer, we uh, measure the highest level of the meniscus. Here, we measure the lowest level of meniscus, and correction of temperature and albumin is a must for urinometer. The urinometer is uh, normally calibrated at 20 degrees Celsius, so we also correct for the uh, room temperature. Now, what corrections we do? This is again uh, asked in the viva. So, for temperature, every 3 degrees Celsius, if there is rise of temperature, then we add 0 0.001. If the temperature is uh, less, matlab, less by 3 degrees Celsius, we deduct 0 0.001. So, for every 3 degrees Celsius above or below the calibration temperature, we do, uh, we subtract or add 0 0.001. Then for proteins, if for every 1 gram per dl of protein, we subtract uh, 0 0.003 from the reading. And for every 1 gram per dl of uh, glucose that is present, we have to subtract 0 0.004 from the reading we get. So uh, these questions, this questions, these corrections, they are uh, asked in the viva. And uh, details of the specific gravity I have also uh, given in the uh, in my PPT on in my lecture on the instrument, the link I will give in the comment section. So this is the urinometer and this is the jar containing the urine and minimum 15 ml urine is needed and this is allowed to float in the urine and the uh, walls of the urinometer should not touch the wall of the urine container. Now lastly the causes of increased specific gravity. <clears throat> so, you should again know the normal values of specific gravity. 24 hour sample has a specific gravity between 1.015 to 1.025, while a random sample will have a specific gravity between 1.003 to 1.030. So, you can remember by this 03 and here this is 30. Causes of high specific gravity, uh, uh, it is called condition is called hypersthin urea. Causes are dehydration, diarrhea, vomiting, glycosuria, protein urea. So the solutes they are increased in the urine and cause increased specific gravity. Low specific gravity when the solutes are decreased, uh, like in case of increased fluid intake and stage renal disease and diabetes inhibitors. So decreased solutes in the urine they, that will cause the decreased specific gravity. So this is a last slide uh, important viva question. What is what do you mean by low specific gravity which is fixed? So low and fixed specific gravity occurs when there is complete uh, uh, kidney failure. So in chronic renal disease, in the end stage renal disease, when kidney has lost its uh, ability to concentrate the urine. So what happens? The uh, specific gravity of the urine becomes equal to that of the plasma, which is 1.010. So the specific gravity gets fixed at this value. Remember as 1010. 
1.010 is the fixed and low specific gravity because you know the uh, 24 hour urine sample has a specific gravity of 1.015 to 1.025 so it is low and fixed this is again a viva question so i hope uh, you find this uh, lecture useful any other question which you have you can uh, ask in the comment section these are my references and thank you very much